Let's say that I have two different gases at two different temperatures that just got in, in contact with each other. So this is my magenta gas right over here. Let me draw a bunch of the molecules of my magenta magenta gas right over here. And it's just this system over here, I guess what you, whatever you want to call it, has just come in contact with this blue gas. This blue gas right over here. And let's say that right when we're starting our simulation, our experiment, that this magenta gas has a higher temperature. Higher, higher temperature. And our blue gas has a lower temperature. Lower, lower temperature. So let's just remind ourselves what temperature is, especially if we think about it on a, on a molecular scale. So higher temperature, lower temperature. Temperature is proportional to average kinetic energy. So these molecules, they're going to be vibrating around. They're going to be bumping around. They're going to have, they're, each of them are going to have kinetic energy. And if you average them, that's going to be proportional to the temperature. So let me, let me depict each of these individual molecules' kinetic energy. Maybe this one is doing that. Maybe this one is doing that. Maybe this one is going in this direction. Maybe that one is going in that direction. That one is going in that direction. This is going in that direction. That is going in that direction. So. Notice, they all have different directions, and the magnitude of their velocity can be different. They all have different speeds. They, or they all might have different speeds. So they have different speeds right over here. And they're all bumping into each other, you know, kind of transferring their kinetic energy, transferring their momentum to, from one particle to another. But when we talk about temperature, we're talking about the average kinetic energy, or what's proportional to the average kinetic energy of the system. Well, this one, each of these molecules are also going to have some kinetic energy. But on average, it's going to be lower. Maybe this one is doing something like this. This one is doing something like this. This is doing something like this. This is doing something like this. So they're different, but on average, they're going to be lower. So hopefully you see that these magenta arrows are bigger than these blue arrows that I'm doing. And they don't all have to be. For example, this one might have a lot of kinetic energy. But if you average it out, the average here is going to be lower than the average here. So just like that. Now, if this is our initial state, what do we think is going to start happening? Well, before our, our different groups of gases were colliding with, kind of with, with itself, or the magenta was colliding with the magenta, the blue was colliding with the blue, but now they're going to start colliding with each other. And so you can imagine when this, this molecule right over here collides with this molecule, it's going to transfer some kinetic energy to it. So after the collision, after the collision, this one might be going so after the collision, so let's just say they just bounced into So this is right before, and let's say they just finished bouncing into each other. So right after they finish bouncing into each other, this one might ricochet off. So this one is going to go this way. Let me do this in a different color. So it might hit this one, bounce off, and then transfer some of its kinetic energy, and then it bounces off in this direction. While this one, after the collision, after the collision, is going to is maybe going to move much faster in this direction. And so notice, you have a transfer of energy. Just with that one collision, you had a transfer of kinetic energy from this molecule to that molecule. And this is going to happen throughout the system. That the, the faster molecules, the ones with more kinetic energy as they collide, you're going to have transfer of energy. So let's see, you're going to have a transfer of energy from the higher temperature to lower temperature. Transfer transfer of energy. And this transfer of energy, and you could consider this transfer of thermal energy. We're talking about temperature here. So the word, you know, if you're thinking about things that are related to temperature, we would say thermal. So these, this is transfer of thermal energy. Transfer of thermal energy. The amount, so you're gonna have, if, if you start, you're gonna start with higher energy here. You have higher average kinetic energy. You had lower average kinetic energy here. But this, this higher kinetic, this is gonna transfer energy from the magenta to the blue. It's gonna go from higher temperature to the lower temperature. And that energy that's being transferred, that energy that's being transferred, we call that, and this is a word that you have probably heard many times in your life, we call that energy that's being transferred, we call that heat. That literally these hotter, this hotter gas over here is heating up, is heating up this cooler gas. 
And the way that this, this transfer of thermal energy is happening, where it's through the collision of the particles, the, col- the, the transfer of kinetic energy through the, colli- the collision of particles, it's a transfer of momentum, we call this conduction. We call this thermal conduction, or I'll just call it conduction. I'll call it, let me write, thermal conduction. I'll do it in a new color. So this that is being described is thermal conduction which is a way that many times you've experienced heat being transferred. For example, you probably have had the experience of of if you take a oh, I don't know, let's say you take a you take a pot. Let's say you take a pot like this. And let's say it's a cold pot at first. So its particles, the particles in the pot have a lower kinetic energy. So I'm not going to be able to do all of them. And then you put it over a fire. You put it over a fire. Let me see if I can draw it. You put it over a fire. So this is the fire. This is the fire. And we're talking about really just heating up the metal of the pot. I'm not even concerned about what's in the pot right now. So this fire is going to heat up, is going to heat up the bottom of this pot first. And it's actually going to do it uh, primarily through thermal conduction because Fire is nothing but super hot air particles, and those super hot air particles are going to bump into the metal particles of your pot. So these metal metal particles of this pot, they're going to be their kinetic energy is going to start going up. So this part of the pot is going to start heating up. And right when you turn right when you turn your stove on, uh, the top of the pot will still be cool, but the bottom is going to get hot very fast. But if you just wait a few minutes, these, these, these metal particles are going to keep bouncing and vibrating into each other. And so eventually, the top over here is going to get, the top over here is going to get quite hot. It is going to get quite, is going to get quite hot. And the way that the top of this metal got hot, it was through thermal conduction. That these, the, the metal at the bottom got hot first, and then they bounced into their neighbors, or, or vibrated into their neighbors, and transferred some of that kinetic energy. And so once again, you see this transfer of heat from a higher temperature region, higher temperature region, to a cooler temperature, or lower temperature region.